Hello everyone, welcome to Wind Down Friday. Today, our special guest is Gene Sheridan, CEO of Navitas. Hi Gene, welcome aboard. How are you? Thank you. Thank you, Maurizio. Good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much. Where are you located, Gene? In Los Angeles area. The office is in Torrance. I live in Rolling Hills. Okay. So Gene, today in this Wind Down Friday, we will talk... Uh, uh, about the technology, about you. So to start, uh, tell me more about, about you. So with over 25 years of experience in power, in semiconductor, so why power? What inspired you to enter in this, uh, in this field? And uh, what was your first job in the industry? Yeah, bo both led me to power. I got an electrical engineering degree um, and had all these offers for different engineering jobs and, and none of them sounded super exciting to me. Um, but I had had a summer internship with international rectifier mm -hmm. between junior and senior years, a chance to come from New York to California for a summer who wouldn't do that. Uh, and it was a fantastic summer, a great experience. And I learned about semiconductors and I learned about power electronics and that really sort of opened my eyes to a new field but what especially intrigued me is International Rectifier offered a, a unique two-year rotation training program on the hand, on the job, six months per rotation, six to 12 months, where you could really go in and do real project work and get to know what it's like to be a design engineer, to a product engineer, a sales engineer, a marketing engineer. And I got that whole experience. And, and I love the variety. I love the learning because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I didn't know what type of an engineer I wanted to be. Um, and so it all sort of connected together with that rotation opportunity uh, right out of college with International Rectifier and the, the rest is history. So you, you have led diverse teams from startups to large scale business unit. So how would you describe your style, your leadership style? So how has this also evolved? during uh, your career in the semiconductor industry, considering the, the changes, so to stay on the wavelength of these changes? Yeah, I think for me, even as a small child looking back, I didn't realize how sort of uh, entrepreneurish nurring I was uh, at the time, constantly finding an unmet need, a market opportunity, whether, whether it was selling jokes at the age of five or creating uh, uh, a, 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 my own uh, detective agency at the age of eight to search for lost animals in the neighborhood or whatever that challenge, silly challenge might be. I was always sort of looking for a new opportunity, an unmet market need, something to sort of not just create money, but create a business that never existed before. And I think the other key ingredient for me is the people. You know, you can't do it by yourself. You have to surround yourself with the smartest people you can possibly find in a field and then figure out how to build that business, what market to go after, what technology you can innovate. And I, I've learned over the years how to do that. And I think do it well at International Rectifier, create three different businesses from nothing there. And they went on to do really well, uh, then running BridgePro later, and then creating Navitas and Empower, two more companies in the last decade. It was always that same model. Where's that unmet market need? And how do I surround myself with some really smart people that together we can figure out how to capitalize and build the technology, build the team, build the products, build the market, build the business model. All a lot of fun for me. So managing a $600 million, million dollar business unit at the International Rectifier must have been a significant leadership challenge. So what uh, strategies did you employ to drive uh, growth and foster high-performing team? And also, how are you applying those now uh, at your current company, Navitas. Yeah, you know, a really good mentor once told me management all, is always about figuring out what are the right priorities at the right time, where to focus at this time. And you can, anybody can list good things for a company to focus on, winning customers, winning technology, hiring great people, getting great shareholders, uh, becoming, creating great profits, you know, but what to focus on at each stage of the creation and scaling of a company changes dramatically. Mm. And so I think that's the, the art and the science of creating any business is what are your priorities in day one can be totally different than where you focus and what your priorities and your skill sets and your strengths have to be on day 10 and day 100 and day 1000. So each of these phases uh, have 
changed. And, and I always like to think that I'm quite adaptable and self-aware in realizing those changes that need to occur. Could be changes in people, changes in strategy, but definitely changes in priority and where you focus. So to your question, when you get to 600 million or even a Navitas at you know, 80 million or 100 million a year, the things start to shift around uh, driving um, KPIs, key metrics, um, driving key leadership, middle management and senior leadership that can manage large, large parts of the organization uh, at once. How do you drive that accountability and performance excellence throughout the company around common goals and common metrics? So how you manage the people and nurture the people that can be the key leaders of a business that big uh, become a, a much bigger priority versus sort of leading by doing, which is what you can do at the very beginning when you're in that sort of zero to $50 million phase. So what do you consider the defining moment or most rewarding achievement of your professional journey? Well, certainly, you know, it all developed in a very fun but unpredicted way, creating multiple businesses that went on to be successful at International Rectifier were great. Then running my own startup at BridgeCo was super fun and challenging and anxious. And then sort of combining all of those skills together for the creation of Navitas, my power background, my international rectifier connections and knowing this industry, my startup CEO experience, how to raise money, raise capital. It all sort of came together, um, allowing me to bring all those skills uh, and all those aspirations together in the creation of Navitas. And then seven years uh, in after the founding, which is not that long in the world of semiconductors to achieve a billion dollar IPO was, was of course, extraordinary. So I'd probably point to that one uh, uh, as, as, as certainly the most rewarding and most exciting, not just for me personally, but to see that creation for the shareholders, for the investors, for the employees, the partners, suppliers, it's a whole lot of fun. So to be a CEO, being a CEO, CEO what are the, the best, what are the worst uh, things about uh, this job? Wonderful job. Well, you know, I think it, it cuts in both ways. I think you get... Uh, probably credit for the successes, uh, which always feels good, uh, but you got to share that credit with the team that made it happen. But then you you get the ownership when it's not going so good and every major problem lands on your doorstep. And so, you know, I think that cuts both ways. The highs are incredible highs. The lows will bum you out too. And I, I always say you got to have a kind of a high pass and low pass filter. You're never as good as those great times. You're never as bad as those bad times. You're somewhere in the middle hustling every day to make a difference and make it right and make the business better. So during challenges, during uh, complex business uh, uh, decisions that you you took during your career, what motivates you personally as a, as a leader during these uh, challenges, those, during these uh, decisions? Bad, good, so not so bad. What motivates well, you personally? I think there's always two things. I think one, talking to people you trust uh, is always valuable. Mm -hmm. That's just human nature. We got to get the words out. Don't keep it inside. Listen and learn from others that can give you perspective, suggestion, recommendation, buy-in, solutions, especially those that need to figure out the right path and figure it out with you. So in others, don't try to do it on your own. You have a team of well-respected, talented, diverse people around you. Take advantage of them. And then number two, I always think I, in the end, you come grounded. Again, it's human nature. We're motivated by a better future. So if you can see past the challenging thing, if I can just get through this tough decision, this tough day, this tough situation, think about that better future I'm creating. And in the end, that motivates all of us. And you've got to only, not only motivate yourself that way, share that motivation, because we're all going through whatever that hard time might be or hard decision is to, to see the potential that's possible that, that drives you every day to get through the hard parts, to get to the better parts. Great. So beyond your job, Let's talk about uh, about you. So, which are your hobbies? So, to stay relaxed, to recharge your battery, your batteries. So, next project with your family, which is your favorite destination, uh, holiday destination? Yeah, yeah. I I would say it's you know work, 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 and then it's family, family, family. There's not a lot left, but boy, I love the family time. I have four great kids um, nice. spanning ages. Ages 20 to 27, so two young adults, two young pre-teenagers. We have a ton of fun together. Love to go on trips. Probably our favorite is a Mexico you know, beach getaway. Even though we're in Southern California, we're here because we love the beach. We love the warm weather. We'll do a little snow time here and there, but we're not big snow people. But love a good getaway beach and, and chance to relax 
so that's a big one. And then for me personally, uh, I don't have a lot of time left over after all of that, but, but basketball is sort of something that I, I was born with one unique talent to be six foot, six inches tall. And so I take advantage of that talent. <laughs> the best. It's the only skill I have in basketball, but I take advantage of it until somebody shows up taller than me, then, then it's not so good. But, uh, but that's my one thing for exercise and social and competitive uh, outlet, a lot of fun. Nice. So my last one, uh, Gene, back to, to the job, Navitas. Navitas has uh, a good portfolio in terms of game, in terms of Siri on Garbide. Uh, I wrote different articles on powerelectronicsnews.com. So how do you see the market in terms of GAN, in terms of uh, Silicon Garbide, wide band gap evolving in the next year? What excites you most about the future of them? Yeah, well, we've seen some slowdown. AI obviously is the hot space we've seen because of interest rates and other things, a bit of a slowdown in solar, industrial and automotive. Again, you have to look past the short term and see the, the opportunity in, uh, in front of us is incredible. The world of power semiconductors is in the 20 to $30 billion range, only about 4 billion of that. So only about 15% of that is now adopting GAN or silicon carbide. Most of that silicon carbide today, of course, GAN is the new kid on the block. So the opportunities are really extraordinary. And while we're a young company, We've got 10 years of technology leadership in gallium nitride under our belt, and that's only accelerating going forward. But then the company we partnered with and acquired with Genesec spent 20 years of industry technology, innovation, and leadership. So we've got a lot of pedigree, a lot of intellectual property there. Um, it's about choosing your battles. We can't be the leader yeah. everywhere. We can't dominate everything. So we've really doubled down on mobile, where we started in GAN chargers, electric vehicle, which has still got a long way to go in growth and adoption of gallium nitride and silicon carbide. And then data centers, of course, AI data centers. And I'd say the beginning of AI is in the cloud. AI is going everywhere with IoT and edge devices over time. So we see incredible opportunities heavily in those three areas. And that will trickle down into home appliance, industrial, broad-based consumer, and solar. So a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of opportunity going forward. A great future for wide band gap, for sure. I am yes, a fan sure. of Wideband Gap. Thank you, Gene. You are. You've been a great sp spokesperson for Wideband Gap. We love all your articles and coverage, Mauricio. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. Much appreciated. Thanks a lot. I wish you a great weekend and uh, see you uh, in Atlanta, probably next APEC. Yeah, for sure. I'll be there. Look forward to it. Thanks, Mauricio. Thank Appreciate you, Gene. You. Bye. Thank you.